like we've known each other for a few years now by the way i've been coming hanging around the main yeah. street jaywalking hub and sort of uh, we've had this small talk all the time i know you're a master at small talk but <laughs> so anyway, time we sort of sat down and had a longer conversation wow. i always wondered uh, what you've been up to in life in general lately because the whole the hangout situation doesn't happen anymore unfortunately uh, earlier we had so much fun out there right yeah oh man you really you're serious about getting deep attack me heavy with that so much <laughs> no one said that before man master of small talk i think of course you are of course you change my insta bio <laughs> master so, uh, of small talk let's uh, let's get into it all the way from start i want to know dude i know in the last few years what main street has done uh, one of the biggest sneaker actually the biggest uh, sneaker reselling platform in the country recently got it funded congratulations on that thank you physically thank con- you. congratulating you. you finally yes. couldn't make thank it to you. your uh, we got cash party we got cash party <laughs> uh, yeah. so yeah where where did this all begin dude like I, i remember earlier you guys had a uh, this was supposed to be a video platform about sneaker yeah. or something yeah uh, it started as a youtube channel uh, but you know where did it begin is now when i think about it you know it goes deep uh, I, i think really far back if uh it, it, go, it goes all the way back to like this obsession that i grew up with you know um i guess this is my form of like sort of uh almost compensating for being um underperforming in the system um i didn't have it in me to you know perform well at school it didn't take my interest i don't know if it was like me just being weak mentally or um you know so this is my escape that when the real world like you know you can do anything anyone can do anything and those stories that i would read and it was like you know you're reading about batman and iron man and steve jobs and they were all like in the same world of escape for me you know watching like the social network it was all the same thing that you can maybe you can't come first in class but but you can definitely be holed up in a room and build your own little world and and you're a superhero and uh, maybe it was just you know that i grew up so insecure and i was so obsessed with making something of myself in this space that i've been trying like ever since i was like 14 15 uh maybe younger as far back as i can remember as you know i don't feel like i've changed at all <laughs> in the last like 8 10 years since i was like 12 it's just been ah i won't say i'm laser focused i won't say i'm hard working but I'm definitely like like obsessed. It was always this is all I want to do with my life. So I need to build something like hmm. So whatever is happening like this is just always the back of my we have to like stick with it. We got to be the biggest. So mm-hmm. Nothing is big enough. We got to change change things. When did sneakers and probably this culture come into play? Sneakers was a means to an end. And I grew up with this deep desire to just have some form of impact. the search is always where can we cause impact you know it's such a deep rooted like need for validation from the outside world of like oh this you know you've done something i always wanted to create impact i don't know if it's some like a personal desire or like an external stimuli that caused it but it's like oh you got to find something where you can have impact and when i came across it it was clear that oh, we can have impact here um and uh, yeah i just jumped head first as soon as i found out it was it like you were going to build the biggest something <laughs> nothing anything and then he jumped in and never looked back and never looked back it's really rare that people generally start off with a vision of doing something very 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 big it's generally uh, i mean probably watching uh, some of the business guys out there talking about how they started off something with like a lot of passion and ended up so sort of being in a position where oh shit this is blowing out of proportion right so how do i actually sustain it but for you you were always like sort of aiming to build the biggest something in something right that's what your passion is you're probably about business you're probably yeah, about yeah it's it's always been big impact yeah. you know my favorite and i, I realized this a few years ago is the ultimate goal is to have such high impact that that what you build is is normal like you know it's it's it just blends into the daily it's, it's you know it's it's normal for you to have whatsapp it's abnormal for you to not have whatsapp and that was an idea but it's pretty yeah. funny you're you saying that because i mean yeah of course according to me you're doing pretty well with your work uh, you're doing you built something very big you are causing the impact in some space that you wanted to 
you are but generally if i meet you somewhere outside you are not that person who's like wearing the most expensive sneakers you're not the one who's like all in hype piece clothing and you literally with like a basic cap a black tee or a general regular tee and like yeah. probable joggers or uh, you know you're exactly like a very simple this, guy so it's very funny the exact same shoes every time <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah i, yeah, I saw uh, yeah. recently someone commenting on a post saying you need to get rid of those uh, converse <laughs> they 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 very dull they are real shoes i um yeah it's just it's a game i play you know sneakers is my playing field um and i love them i think it's wonderful to understand it I, you know, I live amongst them. I love fashion a lot. I there's a few reasons to it, right? On one end, I don't think I'm there yet in life, where um, my personality is, you know, enough. Um, so I feel like if I'm wearing anything else, it'll cover. Mm. It isn't. I'm not anything yet of like such value that that if I'm covered in so much, I'll. be able to have any sort of you know anything to stand for it's always just sneakers you are wearing um b i i firmly believe and this is the initial reason i switched it was like an overnight realization it was okay when i'm out and i'm wearing a decent pair of shoes you know whatever maybe 40000 rupees if i'm wearing a pair of shoes of 40000 rupees if you are into sneakers and i tell you that here i run this sneaker store um in your head you think oh he'll have shoes around that 40000 So what I wear will be a cap on what your imagination of what we do is, and I don't want to have that ever. That my taste shouldn't impact what it should be for you. So if I'm fully neutral, when I say sneaker store for you, it's boundary. I tell you we have all the hype. It'll be only limited to your imagination. And so overnight, like over two, I wasn't big on it anymore. I collected a couple of nice pieces over a few years, and uh, you know a bunch of things together. It just it didn't feel right, you know. It's like I'm just not there yet in life. Absolutely. Like I, I don't think I can be spending forty, fifty, sixty thousand rupees on shoes or a couple lakhs on anything like that. You know? So I overnight sold all my shoes. I invested in the stock market. Put that money in there <laughs> um, as like a little savings or whatever. I gave away all of my fashion, all my apparel through my blog to my blog audience. I gave away some of the branded stuff to friends. Um, I also just only like to live like a efficient. minimal lifestyle i don't like anything occupying space i think space in my head is important um so when i look in my closet if it's messy it's like that is space that i have to remember what is where so if you if you look at my closet now it's it's incredibly systematic to the point i do not have to think so i wear the exact same pants every day these pants were built like custom made for me um the anti bacterial on the inside the waterproof on the outside it's a swiss fabric called uh, dry skin You don't have to wash them more than like once a month. Uh, they have pockets carved out perfectly for two phones. Um, additional pockets, one for essentials, one for non-essentials, and a zipper waterproof pocket for like my membership cards and things like that. So I also don't have a wallet. Um, so right now, life is all about. Uh, I am so desperate to be building that I don't like to have any weight in my head for anything else at all. So when I wake up in the morning, I don't have to think about what to wear. If it's gym clothes, it's gym clothes. Other than gym clothes, I know exactly what pants I'm wearing. Um, if it's hot, I have a set of T-shirts. It's about six T-shirts, two of each color. Um, you know, it's two gray, two whites, and two blacks. I think a um, couple other plain T-shirts like that. I have two crew necks, one gray, one white, and I have one dark gray hoodie. <laughs> and I have one black main street hoodie that we just made. Yeah. So it's just all that I wear whenever I go anywhere, and it's beautiful. I don't have to think about it. It's so easy. simple to pack. And the closet is also organized in such a manner that when I exit the shower. um you know it's you brush your teeth you exit there's my boxers and pants the next closet has my uppers and then there's moisturizer at the mirror and I'm out so just straight line movement when I'm leaving I don't have to think about anything it's all you uh, managed to compartmentalize your life pretty much uh, in <laughs> detail uh, in depth to the extent that you never forget what you've done on a daily basis yeah uh, do you have like a person assistant who helps you out with all of this Uh, How do you manage all of this? I have a, I have an assistant who does help a decent bit with things. Um, in the sense, again, I don't think it's worth my time to uh, find a carpenter to fix a door, or to get my office painted, or to get a whiteboard put. I just don't think those things are worth like devoting time on my task list to. Um, and you know, if someone else is willing to do that, uh, you know, and is compensated fairly for it, I think it's perfectly valid job opportunity. And I think utilizing your human resource as well is important. So. 
my helper at home, my driver, like my car is a tank. Hmm. In the sense, it has you know it has contact lens solution, it has a spare pair of glasses, it has a contact lens case, it has perfume, it has mask, it has Wi-Fi, it has vaccine, oh, it has water, it has spare pair of clothes, it has a power bank, it has enough charge. It's crazy how you remember all of that. Um, yeah, because I put time into it. <laughs> I generally sat one day and I was like, this is such a big op. Because now when I sit in the car, I don't have my car. It's beautiful. And you know, my driver is also just this brilliant guy who's like my best friend at this point. Is it optimizing my life so well? Is that I don't have to think about so many things that are just not worth my time. Uh, that being said, I know a lot of this is just really stupid. I'm just very obsessed with it, <laughs> <laughs> and it gives me great joy that I can sit in my car, open my laptop, and be working. I don't think it's stupid at all, man. I have uh, realized even myself doing a lot of things right on a daily basis. Everyone's just so hell bent on doing so much. They don't realize the lesser you do, the more time. Or the more efficiency you have in yeah. having your thought put in place. Yeah, right? and you know, when I say this, I feel like I might be glorifying myself to make it seem like I work a lot, but I don't. I don't know how to. Mm-hmm. I never developed the ethic to work fourteen hours, sixteen hours. So I built a little ecosystem around me that supports that. Oh, if I wake up late and get to office, my fruit is cut every day. My B twelve and my vitamin supplements are delivered to me every morning. So if I sleep elsewhere or I'm late to office, I have a guy who brings to office. I mean, I don't think about it. If I need like when I work out every day, it's either I go to the club or I work out on the terrace. When I go to the terrace, I just have to tell my guy. He goes on, gets the terrace key. Um, he gets a yoga mat out. I work out, come back. He cleans it, puts it back. He's gonna protein shake the geezers on my towels. They out. I don't think about it. It's just not. I don't think it's worth my time at all. You're that um, guy who has a guy for everything. I don't have a guy for everything. <laughs> I, have, I have two guys who do everything. <laughs> okay, I don't have a separate guy for everything, but I have two or three guys in every space. I can go to the office. I don't ever have to lay the tape, the frame on the pool. You know, we have a guy who does that. He does everything in the office, oh, but he uh, also knows his way of it. Imagine me ringing Vedan, I'm coming to your house for dinner. He's like, oh, let me inform my guy. <laughs> no, but then he'll know. At right? some point, there's going to be and guys. If you come home more than twice, he has to know what you like. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. you know, Hariram is my home guy. And Deepak is like my car. Very, very sweet guy. And Deepak is incredible and smart. Hariram is stupid. <laughs> yeah, I love him, but he's super <laughs> black in life. But the only reason... You know, you keep him around is because you know that I remember patterns. If you remember patterns, that's very valuable. So when he when he was coming, when I, when I hired him, I was told that this dude is blank. But I was like, I don't mind that. It's a blank slate for me as well. So I can write every program one on top of the other and layer them to an extent where he knows that my tofu is running out. So he knows to message my assistant to say, tofu is running, you get tofu. So he knows exactly how much to measure my tofu for dinner. So I can count my calories without having to put the time and effort into counting my calories. And if you can lay that into a system, then that's infinitely beneficial, right? So whether I have like a chock a block day with meetings or, you know, I'm free, I can still get the exact meal that I want at the exact time that I want without having to think about it. And I can imagine like a lot of this uh, sort of people end up looking at it like, oh, you have everything sort of being handed to you every day. But there's so much training that goes into <laughs> wiring your own uh, life in a way you want it, right? Like even if you have help from outside, I'm sure... There are things or patterns you want a certain way. So to train someone to do it exactly the same way. It's a lot, it's a lot of effort. It's definitely a lot of work. Right? Especially for, first thing is like penning it down or what is there yeah. that suits me. Trial and error and then probably retraining that person again and again. So no, it is hard. 100%, it's, it's, I personally relate to it because I also like love to micromanage my life to an extent where I have that mind space to do a stuff which is more thought oriented, right? Yeah. So yeah. but have you always like been like this? Like more focused on I've always or... been fascinated with these things. Okay. I enamored is I guess the correct terminology. So you know, um, and of course you know, I never had the money when I first moved to Bombay. And also I don't know if I do, but I have justifications for each of them. That's my one skill set. All my closest friends will tell you. My one skill set is that I can justify anything. I'll give you <laughs> perfectly back because I'm, I'm just a salesman at heart. Right? So I know that my straight, you know, monetary explanation to hire a driver is uh, you know that Bombay is having traffic. I get that much more work done per unit time. Of course. In, you know, three days of working in the car that I have, I can make more money than it cost like higher time. People don't get that, just especially just that specific part where you invest something to sort of free your own time. People don't value time as much. Yeah, I think your time is the most important bit, right? And the training, it's, it's definitely work, but it's so worth it from like, it's like CapEx versus OpEx. Right? And you think that, oh, it's, Take up three hours of my day to train this guy and that's a heavy operating expense, so to speak. But if you put three, six, eight hours today as a capital expense, it pays off for two years. You know, two years, I can compound and save on that time. Because I know that when I get home from travel, he knows exactly how to put what clothes back, what 
clothes to wash when they wash where do they go back you know exactly what goes there whether it's been worn or not where do they go my washing cycle is perfectly sync um you know gym clothes are here casual clothes are here uh, and the closet is also organized by space so it's things that i wear daily are hung up things are slightly less often you know spare nights your t-shirts in a pile extremely things detailed. that are emotionally connected to me that I don't have to wear in a pile things that I don't ever wear shirts for example <laughs> up away <laughs> jeans that I've had for 5 years and not worn in 3 years up far away and there's one layer further up which I never touch at all but I can't throw as another thing right I got over my need to hoard a couple of years ago I I had like a connection that everything so I started getting rid of everything I was like I don't need this in my life So you know when I got the house I very intentionally got a completely unfurnished house thinking that I want to build it a requirement and we didn't have a dining table until like 6 months ago uh 3 months ago actually you know and I finally got a dining table why because I felt like I don't want to be sitting in my office in here mm-hmm. um and you know a dining table would be nice but even the house once in 2 weeks I sit and I recycle most of it yesterday you know we just went through this log you know it's like what is all books that I'm reading and anything that's around I was like why is the things all lying around the house and there are many times you see anything around the house that is not needed and doesn't have a specific spot it goes here so when I'm actively using you see the shan's kindle you see my laptop put it the drawer is only for keys and mouse anything else I said is not belong we found the drawer had a bunch of spare medicine and this and that I don't know there's spot for medicine I don't know make sure we have a different box of medicine that we don't use at stuff that's in deep stuff and you know where it is it had like old house bills gas bills legacy bills so I don't know You find a spot for all house papers. When I ask for house papers, you get it. Because I don't, I don't want to think about whether or not the house papers. I don't ever need this ready like this. Okay. But it should be around somewhere just in case you need it. So like, I don't even want to think about where that goes. And then down in the closet is all our fitness. There's a couple of dumbbells. There's more yoga mats. There's a couple of skipping ropes. Again, placed in order of accessibility. What do you need the most? You just yoga mats. You just order that. Again. It's easy to get. The other things are further. And The idea is you put half an hour in every couple of weeks. It just like settles yourself. Dude, it uh, <laughs> must be exhausting having the mind that you have. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of detailing, and I'm sure all of this stems out of the fact that <sighs> if it is not in the right space, I'm going to feel an extreme level of OCD. No, so it's not <laughs> OCD, right? I, I I'm not saying it is, but imagine I, like yeah. considering the fact that you have everything detailed out. Let's say. Ten, a five out of the ten things are not in place. How do you feel about it? Dude? So that that's what I'm trying to say. It's a very direct choice. I can live in the mess. It's probably a look at it like it's oh. a want over a need. A that B that disturbance is not worth your headspace ever. So I wouldn't ever allow that. I wouldn't be like, oh, I can't sleep because it's not important. <laughs> it's not really important, is it? Is it really important that my yoga mat is more accessible than the dumbbells? Because I don't use the dumbbells as much when you're working at home. What's most important is that you know your your space mentally is at ease, and you're not worried about anything. And at the end of the day, you have a roof over your head, and that's a lot easier to look at. And so these are things that I look at and be like, okay, when I have the space, because I I luckily have so much head space. You know, it's not as exhausting because most things are covered. And I'll sit down at the start of my day, but like, what do I want to do today? Okay, the outside seems a bit messy. Let's reorganize. Sometimes I won't get to it for a week, but it's on my task list. Eventually, I'll get, you know, and I feel nice at the end. Sometimes I'll do just this, and some things will go into an other abyss. You may okay, put in the office drawer because that will sort later because we don't know where that goes. And you go to the office drawer also inside that has a different layer of organization altogether. Of course, dude. Uh, just look at you, man. Looking at you, I can like totally feel the amount of what you put into this. You're like, oh my god, I've run so much. <laughs> no, I'm it's figuring it's, my life no, out it's, it's so that like I can that. focus and like sort of That's put time. Thing. It's it's in fact the complete opposite. You you put all this effort. And it's crazy, time. sorry. It's, and it's crazy that this is just a personal life. <laughs> I have been wanting to get into how you run Main Street, but you're already so in depth about how you run your personal life. I can't imagine the level of you know, management you've sort of instilled at oh, a so, core level at Main Street. So right? that's the thing, right? This is these are desires. In a personal level, it's easy to implement. In a professional level, it's hard because you're true. tinkering with different things all together. This is simple. You, these are things that you know you've seen and they're easy. Um, and you keep saying like it must be a lot of effort. And I, I don't look at it. It's the opposite. I feel like you take a lot of effort when you have to find something every day. I think that's a lot of effort. This is the complete opposite to me. He said you spend so much time hunting for keys. You spend so much time hunting for electric sleeper. You spend so much time wondering where your bloody yoga mat is. I feel like that's effort. You spend so much time thinking about where your socks are. I think that's effort. You spend so much time picking what to wear. So have you? Uh, it's the complete opposite. I feel like this is 
effortless. It's like a little symphony. Of course. You know, I can get up, I can leave the country in six minutes. Because <laughs> I know exactly where each thing is. It's low effort. I know where my cards are, I know where my passport is, I know where my bag is, I know what I would pack for three days, five days, seven days, 12 days, 15 days. It takes me all of six minutes to get all of that and leave. <laughs> I can generally <laughs> leave the guitar, be, nah, be out of the door in six minutes to leave the country for a month. Eyes closed, I can do that. And I think that is low effort. It's the complete opposite of high effort. So you would have, like, my question is going to be about, have you actually figured all of it out and designed your life in a way where you're living to the fullest in the most effortless not manner yet, you can? Not yet, but I'm very far along where I was two years ago. I'm far way ahead, you know. I was lucky enough to move. <clears throat> so it's funny, the previous apartment mm -hmm. that I lived in was a two-bedroom house um, where one bedroom. So when I moved into that apartment, I was a close friend of mine as a roommate. Again, we shared the apartment. And I was like, I'll pay a little more rent so I can use the living room as an office. Because, you know, I hope to have some sort of office activity happening soon enough. We were still building the business at the time. Um, you know, we still are, but it was much more of a nascent stage. Um, Lockdown hit and both of us left. And uh, as he moved out, I ended up, we ended up gathering more inventory. So I stopped in his room. And my lockdown was sort of re-emerging. One of my most important employees at that time, I think it's three or four, was moving back to Bombay. And he ended up staying there. We had another one joined soon enough. Now two rooms. One room is two employees staying. And all inventory. <laughs> So they're living in this room and around them there's shoes. So much shoes the window is covered. Okay? There's just shoes in their room and there's a little bed in between and there's a closet with inventory. They didn't have closet space for themselves. They had suitcases under the bed. Other room was for me to stay in. And the outside space was our operations. Eventually that went from being three of us living there to about six people working in our apartment every day. All shipping, handling, packaging used to happen outside. This was before your store? This was when Bombay store was just about okay. opened. The Bombay store was opening, we were three people. And we, we couldn't open because lockdown hit. Yeah. And we emerged from lockdown with about six, people, six seven person team. Um, so three of us living here, two people outside, two people staying inside, doing work outside and from the store, selling, shipping, packing, handling, customer service, everything in this cramped living room. My cook at the time there in the kitchen, me living here, these two here. This is, everything is happening in two bedrooms. Okay? Everything is happening in two bedrooms. Warehousing, living, Accommodation, operations, all in two bedrooms. It was ridiculously cramped. And from there, I was lucky enough to move to this, like a much larger two and a half bedroom, nice house. Just, and I was like, I want to get a completely yeah, unfinished place. It's a pretty good place. space, plus uh, even the building seems pretty simple. It's a lovely there. building. Yeah. It's great people. Uh, you know, it's new building. It's like polished and all of that. And I had, I had a half room just for an office for myself to sit in. Pretty With cool. a massive window, natural light, white forest, beautiful. You know, now we have like this two and a half bedroom where, okay, I share one room, a friend of mine stays in, I live in the other room, living room's all up, little office we have to sit, chill. It's great. And so here I had the ability to, you know, slightly craft these things that I've dreamed of for so long. And I got to do that. And then, you know, we got an office space separately, we got a warehouse separately, we got a new store. So work grew. And then when I got this space, I thought, okay, maybe now I can start tinkering with these things. And, you know, so we have a little shoe rack, which has, you know, my shoes, <laughs> it's one pair of shoes, I have basketball shoes. There's a drawer right there with my socks. Uh, I got so much closet space, a much nicer room. Each piece of furniture was also completely derived from function and from necessity. It's like, whenever I need something, I don't want to get something I need. So every single spot in this house has been thought and thought through. It's just like, I'm not in the phase of my life where I'm buying the nicest couch. I find it was, oh, we need a couch, we need a couch. We need a unit, some sort of storage, we got the unit. We needed a recliner, sure. Got Man, uh, you're giving me a mad scientist vibes. <laughs> <laughs> like all, you're like doing this and like, oh, I'm crazy, but I'm going to do business, make money with the big thing ever. <laughs> I can really feel that. But it's pretty good, dude. Like there's no denying that you've sort of gone and done it, right? So absolutely uh, all your ways, anything like people have, uh, I don't think anyone has a right to comment on. Uh, it's I mean, you can comment. It's definitely <laughs> weird. I get it. I mean, I'm a little bit weird. I get it's it. It's not an opinion anymore. It's a proven case study of this is actually going to work for someone. It um, worked in the sense, dude, we survived. <laughs> we survived so many ups, so many downs, and we somehow made it away here. And we're growing. And I sometimes, on one end, I'm like, oh, this is all part of the plan. This is supposed to happen. And, and the, the other end, I'm like, I can't believe it's happening. In the midst of all of this, you're vegan, right? I'm also vegan. <laughs>
That's why there's so much tofu. Oh my god. My assistant is very concerned about how much money we spend on tofu every month. Oh my so god. So I explain so over with why we spend so much money on tofu. I'm like, uh, you know, I need that protein. It's <laughs> hard. What's up with the uh, Main Street in general now? Since What's up? Uh, yeah, you've got it funded, and I know you put out a post about who are the uh, investors and. I I want to know how it come into place. I'm sure a lot of people who be watching this would want to know, right? Uh, how did that happen? Like, uh, you don't do a lot of PR, by the way, right? Like, you didn't end up do a, putting out an entire press release about what this is, and um, what did you? You know, I have an interesting equation with the the concept of PR in general. You know, when I moved to Bombay, I was um, a very naive kid. I still think I'm fairly naive like that. And you know, slowly, suddenly, every now and then, a little glass shattered in my head one by one. And I first found out that celebrities call paparazzi. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> it's, like, it's like my heart was broken, dude. I was like, they don't just pull up. And I was like, damn, I don't ever want to do that. I feel so bad about myself. And then I learned about paid press and that people reach out to like press to do things, and and that companies have PR departments and. I was like, I thought these guys are just supposed to find things interesting and write about them. So for the longest time, I was like, when will anyone find me interesting? <laughs> like no one's writing anything mm-hmm. about us. I was like, you know, we're selling shoes to Ranveer Kapoor, and Ranveer Singh is pulling up at the store, and this one and that one, and no one gave a shit because I think everyone from Bollywood's buying from you right now. Yeah. So we worked hard getting our goals, and my thought was, once that happens, press will happen because they because they care about mm-hmm. these. It's not like they care about us, but they care about these. At least you care about them. Like, and then I started seeing GQ writing Ranbir Kapoor wearing these seven lakh rupee shoes. I'm like, hey, we sold them to him. <laughs> like, can you, like, what, why don't you know who's getting these shoes? And then I learned about the world of press. So I started doing some research. And I learned about how, you know, there's organic and organic. And in the organic space also, there's a whole effort and exercise into just communicating with the world of press and being friends with them. And. Uh, you know, informing them of what's happening and then letting them choose what they want to write about. And as you know, getting what you pay to get like, that is something like, you know, I get every, every three days, Main Street nominated for top 10 most innovative startups <laughs> in the fashion space. A long email saying, you know, we love what you do because this is this. And this, yeah, is this, also, <laughs> this is a nominal sponsorship fee to cover print and packaging. I just block with like a passion. I'm like, go to hell. All the hope you gave me, I was like, oh, so like, um, so I learned about press. It was okay. We should start um, start informing people because for me, other than not informing, on the flip side, my brand ethos was always: you see Ranveer Singh in our store, we won't post it because for us, it's just another day. It is. You know, today Ranveer's here, tomorrow someone else will be there. Yeah, but Jimmy come keeps happening every day because that's the brand we build. We have to give them that comfort. Right? This is just this is what we do. We're here to take care of you. Um, so I never wanted to be that voice. You know, when Ranveer Singh came to the store, you know, he actually sent us a DM request himself. It was crazy. He followed us on a DM request saying, I'd like to come visit the store. You know, I was in Bangalore, flew back. Um, and he pulled up with an army of packs. I'm sure he never called them. You know, pulled up and they posted ham all over social and everybody else sent it to us. And yo, you know, is, is that your store? And I was like, yeah, you know, it's just another day. The flip side of that is... <laughs> It's, nobody knows <laughs> so we're doing all this good work you know shut us down the celebrities inside nobody gives a shit no one knows and eventually I realized that that's actually bad for business so you know I had to suck up my brand ethos or whatever bullshit it was and and I started talking to like PR people uh, saying you know I don't know how to do this thing. please help us and eventually we found someone good and you know when we got the funding done you know they did that bit but I don't want to put out the amount of valuation. I just felt like it, at this stage, it's a little bit like the, the, the numbers in the air, you of know? Course. So while we had to do oh, it, we got funded and we had to celebrate because I was so grateful. We don't want to put why out- Why take away the fun? Why take away the fun? You think how much. And this was a seed round? This is an early seed round. Early you know, we're actually raising some more capital now as a part two of the seed round. Uh, end of this year, we're going to do a pre-series A, next year we'll do a series A. Um, yeah, that's but what's take up. me through the process. How did it work out? How long? How did it work out? Of? So it was uh, interesting, right? We never planned to raise. We were a very, you know, very profitable organization, growing steady. Um, and it was okay, it's a good business, it's going well. Eventually, I personally reached a pivot where I was like, I don't know if I want to build this over 15 years. 
I think we can build this over five years and a little bit of capital will help. I also had heavy like PTSD from, uh, you know, having co-founders prior to this. Mm-hmm. And I used to be a one third stakeholder in the business. Uh, I went from that to 100%. Uh, and so diluting that was like this feeling that I had and I was like, okay, you know, you know, get over it. You know, you make a mistake, you make a mistake. It's fine. Also, what's in that? You lose your business. Fuck it, you Um so I was like, you know, let's optimize for growth speed. Um, let's start talking to the right people. Let's get more people skin in the game. Uh, and so I did. And I, you know, most of my education in the city was just from conversation coffee. You know, I got coffee with you once in the class. So I remember this. I always pick ideas from anybody I could find, you know, who had anything to offer without taking away coffee. Um, the idea was all these people have been giving me that time and, you know, tell me they have faith in me. Would you put their money to? That would be big valuation. And it happened. And I was like, wow, there's some people who I really, really looked up to and respected deeply. And to see them, like, you know, back me with their money was, wow, like, okay, you know, this is. Uh, there are some pretty good names. Uh, beyond the fact that they're actually funding a business, they're pretty valuable names. They're very valuable. Uh, but I think the Kunal from Cred, okay. there's Bhavisha, Kunal, I mean, Kunal well. invests everywhere. So, you know, it's a. It's definitely valuable to have. I think his there, might have been more financial motive he's, than no, so operational as On such. the opposite end of things, Kunal's actually, it's beautiful because his form of giving back is that I could do charity, I would just fund a lot of startups. So he has a whole theory on, he, he invests all over. So, you know, what I was very happy, what I'm really grateful for is the fact that I have access. To a lot of the startups he's funded don't even have access to. So they have to ask other people to introduce. I'm lucky enough to be able to text him and, you know, he invested also because I, in fact, I was lucky enough to have coffee with him a few months before we were raising. And at that time, he heard what we were doing. He was like, you clearly got something going. He was like, what can I do for you? And I was like, nothing. I just really want to have coffee. <laughs> and a few months later when I was raising, I was like, hey, can I do a raising? Would you mind? Would you be interested? He was like, yeah, sure. And that worked out. And then there's Rohan Batra from uh, Cavatex Brands. Of course. Um, Fila. He owns, you know, they own Fila and Vans and uh, a bunch of other businesses globally. And he's, you know, MD of a huge business. One of the smartest, like, businessman I've ever had the privilege of you know hanging out with and for years I've been annoying him yes. every few months <laughs> hey can I come to coffee can I come to coffee and he's been so sweet to always you know take out a couple of hours and I go down to his office and just rattle him with my life's problems and he would always give me the most sound like brilliant advice and solid reality checks and because I've always been so vulnerable with him my biggest concern was in fact getting his money is would he be willing to back us and, you know, when he w- agreed, it was like, wow, you know, maybe we've actually done something. Yeah, that was that was a big moment. Having him on the table meant like everything. I really wanted him on the table. And all put together, we had a bunch of incredible people support us and, you know, get us further towards where we want to go. That's pretty solid, yeah. dude. Like I said, I think that was one of the turning points uh, in the recent times that I know, like, you've been at, again, at it for probably five years. Business Main Street is technically four years, but as a business, it's like two years yeah. something. So yeah, lockdown was peak for you. Lockdown was peak rate of scale, definitely. I remember early on you would for you did do a lot on YouTube yourself as well, and right? you would do videos on to, sneakers. I think that was one of the first not times. Sneakers. I used to vlog my whole life. <laughs> Conversation began as well. How uh, randomly a few years ago, when before you started the business, right? I. I had come across your YouTube channel and there was one video. I particularly remember you vlogging on your terrace or something like that. I watched that, okay, I'm like, okay, there's some dude, young dude doing <laughs> some YouTube vlogging. Yeah. And then we were talking about it, it's fine. And then years later, I, uh, like, someone, again, me being a complete outsider, not knowing about what the street culture, sneaker culture, etc. Someone telling me, oh, there's a Main Street store opened at Bandra, Cat Road. Like, yeah. Main Street TV has yeah. opened a store. How does that work? Yeah. What are they selling? Yeah, so this is actually a slightly longer story, right? Um, and you can basically watch this whole journey on YouTube. So a few years ago, I hit a roadblock in life. I was, I think, 17 years old. It's not much of a roadblock in life, but whatever it was, it was what it was. <laughs> I um, felt like I didn't have a work ethic, which I didn't. I wanted to learn to work harder, <laughs> push myself and be accountable. I didn't have any accountability. So I thought if I'm, I want to do a lot, right? That was the whole 
billion dollar business. We're going to be Steve Jobs. All of that. Of course, we just spoke about the mad yeah. scientist persona. Yes. Oh, that was always there. It was, in fact, you know, I'm a much calmer version than I was. Um, and I thought, okay, what if I, it was a fleeting thought. What if I start filming myself every day and announcing my day's goals to the internet? You know, I'm super insecure as a person. <laughs> Eventually, I'll get tired of screwing it up. Because it's maybe not 1,000, maybe not 10,000, but 100 people will watch. YouTube for so many people will find. So, and it came as a fleeting thought. And I grabbed onto it. Thinking this should not go. So when I had it, I was like, sounds terrifying. I was going to do it you'll start tomorrow. Wake up 6 a.m. and start. No thinking, nothing. And I, you know, I sold it to myself saying, sort of phone pari film kar lenge. Only three to five minutes. Keep it easy. It shouldn't be too hard. Saat din kar lenge. Saat din hua to, we'll tell people. And I started. Saat din shuru hai. Pachas din ho gai. Saat din ho gai. Saat so din I went every single day. And that's 700 days. Any time of my life comes up, no? I will to pull up a video. So you, one time I hurt myself deadlifting in the gym, I'll pull up a video. I'll tell you I bumped into this guy here, pull up a video. I'll tell you I went to Port Beach at I'll pull up a video of every day of the trip. According to the whole Main Street journey, building up to it. So I was doing this before I had the Main Street idea. The whole journey of building it from when I got the first sneaker to second to third to fourth when I bought the first sneaker, every day is documented on YouTube. It's over easy. two years, 500 days, I would shoot every day, I would edit every day myself. I had a, 2009 time my family computer so it was at this time 8 years old 8 9 years old computer super slow I would shoot all day on my phone Ratko I would edit on this computer I had to finish editing at night because it took 3 hours to render a 3 minute image for <laughs> for comparison an average macbook air the 2013 ka macbook air which most college students around me oh had it would render the same video in 3 minutes yeah. but I had to because it's the only computer I had I had to finish it at night and there were that was the hardest time of my life. There were times when I was at 3 a.m. I'm like dying to sleep and I'm editing this video and I'll be thinking like, like no one gives a shit. Like why am I doing this? Like nobody watches this. Like what am I doing? Who am I doing this for? Those are like the hardest times you go into it. It was like, my lord, like only I know like how hard, but each of those moments is like, you know played its own role in getting us to where we are today. Because over those 700 days, while I didn't get 100,000 subscribers or a million subscribers, I had maybe 5,000 subscribers. And from those 500 people who watch my video every day, it's 500 people watching me every day. And those 500,000, 2,000 people became my first customers, became my first employees, became our first members of our community. Till today, it pays off. I meet people every other day. I used to watch your vlogs. Of course, man. I mean, it's like effort never fails to pay off. Of course, it'll man. even if it seems like it's not, the reward will always come. I personally feel people are not looking at your business the right way. The the way I see it, your business is the content that you've put out over the years, like you just mentioned, and your product is what you're selling. So a business is it's an ecosystem. You know, I sell it now. Right? We're not just a training platform. We're not a brand. We're not a content space. We're an ecosystem of things. And that is really infinitely valuable as compared to an individual entity. Because there's so many things that keep linking to each Absolutely. other. Absolutely. each other. And when I say infinitely valuable, it may not be to everybody. It's me. What is done to us as a team, how fulfilling it is, you know, the gratification that I get, these conversations I get to have, the fact that you want to have this conversation with me. You know, each of these things is important. It's big rewards. Oh, it's very, very grateful for each of them. What's particularly interesting though is, like I mentioned, your brand is a bunch of things combined together. But I don't see your brand sustaining on you monetizing that stuff. It's out there for free. You are not monetizing the content you put out. You're not uh, probably uh, sort of incentivizing someone watching that content versus Getting a product that, that you is sell, brand right? relationship, right? Exactly. I How mean, can you be in a space where, like, if you want something you can't get anywhere else, you get it with me? And on the flip side, be like, buy this from me. That doesn't work. That's unbalanced energy. Absolutely, dude. I, I think that it's is also, not straight line energy. It's also relativity, right? Like, uh, a lot of the stuff you guys put out there is so funny. For me, it's again, I wouldn't sort of uh, purchase something that a brand puts out because 
uh, because only because of the fact that it's probably a good product but it's also that i relate a lot to that brand it's a point of destiny uh, like it's a destination for entertainment for me or it somehow uh, helps me get through something you know just understand read about the idea is to give it culture. yeah so the idea is to give it brand depth you know i often yeah. say our we're in an industry right if our biggest our biggest the biggest part of the business is still like trade right? we're selling shoes we're in an industry where in one kilometer radius from here i'll introduce you to 10 people who will sell you the same shoes that we do at cheaper price okay exactly right. probably yeah so the achievement is in a space where everybody has the same thing that you do how is it that ranveer kapoor is only buying from us you know why is that happen it's not because we have it it's the product of building depth it's a product of servicing several people with no reward for a long time just because that is what you believe in it is the product of you know having values that define you that only you know that other people might not even understand that other people might not perceive that other people might not agree with but having values that you believe in and just putting that time in it pays a reward back and that depth of brand that we provided in doing content that might not have anything to do with sneakers you know today our store vlog is our most successful probably 10000 people watch it every week It's just the team doing bhakti around absolutely. in different spots. Absolutely, and that brand depth, the fact that people who are not into sneakers know about us, that matters to us. Yeah, it's brand, right? I mean, it's not only credibility; it's also like I mentioned, whatever you sell tomorrow, it's going to be the same people buying. It's they want to be a part of something. Yeah. I won't. I wouldn't. Uh, it won't be right for us to say sort of something bigger, but something that they are so closely associated or related to, right? It's just like identity. For, for, right? for example, for me, right? If I was into sneakers, I know I would get it from Main Street because I've personally come there a lot, hung out there a lot. I love what goes on, you know. So it's like I would say your brand is the is what word of mouth used to be before internet. If you think about it that way, right? For sure, uh, and it's also slow building. takes time you have to wait for an opportunity for it to present itself to create itself these things can't happen overnight you can't define brand your head and be like this is our brand you have to wait for an opportunity to act in the way that you choose to believe in. of course yeah. and those are the things that are very hard to quantify especially thinking forward i was thinking forward it's hard to predict everything retrospectively oh you know all of this makes sense now i'm just like Uh, talking about making sense, man. I think uh, this will have to be a different conversation altogether. Let's do a video on uh, what your Twitter really means, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I go through that shit, and sometimes when I'm like, "What is this guy What trying to say?" Talking about <laughs> what is this guy trying to say? All kinds of bullshit, man. <laughs> I think my my dude. You know why? Because a lot of these sarcastic videos that you put out on YouTube, I'm like, "Is this guy trying to just fuck around on Twitter, trying to mess with people's head, or is he actually making sense?" It's a mix, right? On some days, like this one time, I genuinely saw a friend of mine eating steak, and it was a small steak. So I tweeted that I was negotiating. This friend of mine was negotiating with a waiter, and eventually had to accept a minority steak. It's like a pun on like oh steak, which God. is stupid. But on the flip side, then I write out this thesis <laughs> on why the cost of acquisition yeah. of steakers is cheaper in no, no, funny, like, like Bombay like... than Delhi, and that's why we sell more shoes. <laughs> and I'm really serious about that. I live by that shit. Yeah, so it's like. My idea right now is I don't want to take anything seriously in life. Okay, so tell me you right now, I actually realize that your mind really, literally works like that. You are like a mix of personalities. I mean, it's insane, right? It's true. If you, if you But I guess that a lot of the serious shit that you talk about, it's crazy how I was just scrolling through and there'll be a random uh, tweet about this steak of so, like the yeah, one you just mentioned. This friend of mine keeps starting new brands, selling like breakfast. Dude. ऑफ <laughs> for you know the things beyond work that are important relationships friendships um people uh, all those things this year is about getting in touch with my creative side early on in life you know i used to be very creative and from a passion i was also obsessed with business and very early i started outsourcing creative thinking to those better creative than i am um 
and I blocked out an entire personality of mine that was in creative, right? I was very mad scientist about creative also yeah. earlier. Um, and this year, I I don't know if I'm good or no or whatever, but the goal is to, you know, get back in touch with the creative side of me. So that's also why I'm writing on LinkedIn and Twitter. I'm, you know, taking photos again. I, I made a reel of, you know, morning. <laughs> the cost, like, that, was cool, that was pretty cool. Yeah. The idea is to, again, you know, I firmly believe all growth happens in reiteration. So, you know, it's not about taking a project and working on it for a year. It's about how soon can you output learn from, incorporate, and output again. And that growth is important. Uh, you know, reiterative growth is um, the only form of that, you know, growth that I've actually seen work for me. You got to output. You know, that teaches you a lot. Because um, more than anything, you know, the other thing is that distribution is everything. Your product quality is subjective. You know, you might put 10 years into it, but it might be crap for someone else. What is important is that the product distribution. At the end of the day, it means a business, right? In the world of business, you could have a shitty product that's sold heavily, and everybody would be like, "Wow, it's a roaring success." It could be a brilliant product that does not sell, and it's a failure. On the flip side, you know, like a good product can be sold well, and then you have a successful business, and you have a successful product and a successful brand. And you know, each of these things are, of course, very nuanced, but the whole idea is that the end of the day you have to build distribution. So I do want to just output more and more creative work this year from a personal standpoint. I'd like to direct a shoot, maybe a video, uh, um, just do more content on whatever. That's pretty. Content. That's pretty good, dude. And I really feel you at the fact where, uh, of course, like everything you do in business or brand is like very subjective, right? I think we are in a time where because of the internet, there's no right or wrong. You just have to sort of find your audience. And then let them, uh, then, then just keep doing your thing, right? You don't have to, okay, uh, sort of rely on validation, external validation outside of your actual circle. It's crazy how you sell 10 things at a certain price versus you sell 100 things at a certain price. You can have the same amount of revenue. And talking about purely the business sense. That's literally similarly, our business model. <laughs> sell fuel for like crazy prices. Wow, what amazing. <laughs> Everybody's happy. Similarly, on the creative front, dude, like something I might make, you might end up hating. But I might find 10 other people who love this. So that's, that's it's become, fine, it's become so subjective, dude. Yeah. Like, so let me... Said, try, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, when I have a friend who like makes something creative and, you know, if I don't like it, and but they're doing their thing, you know, they're selling it, it's doing well. I won't go out of my way and be fake and be like, wow, well, I'll tell them like, I don't like it, but it doesn't matter whether I like it. Too. So, you know, you shouldn't worry about it. This is my opinion. If, if they ask me, like, you know, I'll, I'm not going to force my opinion on them, but if they ask you, did you listen to my song or you watch my video, I'll be like, oh, you know, I didn't like it because this, but it doesn't matter to you. You're selling it, you're doing your thing, it's amazing. I'm so happy for you, I'm so proud of you. I really, you can be happy for someone and proud for someone and not like what they're doing. You I know? really wish more people were like you, man, in that sense, because uh, talking about, like, again, personal experience, right? I've been working in, in any sort of content, be it in music or be it in uh, entertainment overall, it's been like around five years now yeah. till date i mean this is like one of the first few videos that i told you about that i'm shooting right for my personal content for me it was always like right, okay if 10 of my friends don't like it i don't i shouldn't be doing it but i've come to the ex acceptance of the fact now that it's so subjective all the closest ones to me might end up hitting it but i know i will find my audience only so, two reasons to do it either you like it <laughs> yeah. or it sells like a motherfucker either you really like, like it then you do it or it really sells yeah. Then even if you don't like it, it's okay. <laughs> you're just gonna make that money. Of course, dude. So this I like gone all at it, you know. So it's crazy that how you already accepted the fact that it's gonna be subjective. Right? You can't always please everyone else. For sure, man. Um, you don't need to please anybody. Yeah, dude. You Talk. just gotta make money. <laughs> that's all that really matters. Yeah, that's that's definitely the goal. Uh, talking about the next few steps about you. Let's uh, also, I also want to know what, what's up with the main street. What's next to Main Street? Uh, what are you doing wanna, with all the funding that you've gotten now? What are you doing with all the funding? It's gone, man. <laughs> you got, got cash. <laughs> we got cash and now we got no cash. <laughs> we'll make an updated t-shirt. <laughs> we got no cash again. Please buy this t-shirt so we'll have some more. Uh, but yeah, we're raising more capital to do more fun thing. Uh, you know, uh, we, uh, we built an app. Uh, the app will be out in about May. Oh, wow. uh, we're working on a sneaker convention, oh. a pretty massive Indian, you know, calling it the Indian sneaker convention. Um, we're dropping some new custom tech in the form of our website by the end of this month, which is March, depending on whenever you're watching this or listening to this. Sorry. Um, 
uh, we just launched our own private label called Main Street Gear. Oh. And while well, Main Street Gear is still now just been experimental like t-shirts, I want to give it depth as a brand. So now I'm personally, again, part of exploring my creative side. I'm learning how to make clothes. Um, I'm learning how production works, how fabrics, you know, fit, things like that work. I'm learning from a few friends and putting time into designing a bunch of pieces that might not be commercially very, uh, you know, viable or useful or smart. Uh, but A, it's creative expression for me. Uh, B, it'll give the brand and that vertical depth. You know, when you're buying that t-shirt, you don't want to know that oh, they just made a t-shirt, it's just merch. Then. You want to know that it comes from somewhere, that has a language, that has values, that has... Like an art story. Piece. It's all art. Yeah. Everything in life is art to me. Right? Business is also art to me. Right? It's, it's, at the end of the day, it's, 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 it's a symphony. Are you going to separate the administrative side of your business so that you, fo- you focus on like... It is fairly administ- It is fairly separated. Uh, we've hired some great people recently to lead marketing, to lead operations. You know, the team is everything. I I don't know what... Without these people, if we could have done anything. I, I They all have skills that I just don't. Um, and I... And so sometimes it's like, oh, damn. Like, I'm looking at things happening. I'm like, oh, shit, this is all like came from my head that's that's weird right because it's not really mine it's, it's all of us right? all of us like i definitely play my role i think the role here and there but without each of them like we wouldn't be where we are you know definitely i feel like a founder is credited a little too much today like they, they, a lot of them should be sitting here talking about their journeys because so many ideas came from each of them so much development came from each of them so much of the work the work more than anything and they're everything without them this wouldn't be if I feel like without me, they'd all be elsewhere building something else and definitely doing the same things. But without them, I wouldn't be me. You know, they would still be them, whatever they were. So uh, I feel like they're definitely undercredited like that. It's great of you to acknowledge that fact. Though. It's true, man. It's it's, it's we are only what is people around The status are, right? derivative of being a founder is is irrational in this country. Yes. It's very, very, very irrational. You know, I think about it, it makes so much sense that if they weren't here, they'd be somewhere else still doing them. They are them. They're defined. I'm not. If they weren't here, I wouldn't be me. So they would be them. So who is more important to <laughs> it's like, They're definitely more important. They should be here. They should be doing this. Um, and yeah, dude, I'm just really grateful to have like the team that we do. And you know, for all of us to come together and in a very symbiotic space, accept each other's shortfalls and compensate for them and pull through. Means a lot. That's pretty solid, dude. Uh, great to have you here today again. Thanks. Like, I think this was one of the very few times we've had like an in-depth conversation. Yeah, I got to know what Main Street's all you about. Weird, no, if yeah, we meet now, the elevator, now, I'm like, bro, the people, <laughs> the people are everything. <laughs> like, I start taking my socks and my drawer outside, right near my shoe closet. Now it's amazing. <laughs> Now I can totally relate to your Twitter, dude. Like your mind actually works that way. It's just not you uh, uh, sort of just going at it. It's it's I can see it in your face. Now you're not exhausted, but uh, <laughs> like really uh, looking forward to seeing where Main Street goes, dude. Everything yeah. you've done so far has been quite interesting. Hope we can have like another conversation about For where sure, man. probably this has gotten, and yes. then that time we're Hopefully. going to be talking about a hundred more things that you figured out how to improve in your lifestyle and uh, we get Haridam on board to sort of speak about Haridam how exhausted about. he's gotten. You got to put a shot of Haridam into this. Let's just go ask him for water. And he's like, Hari. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Because Haridam is a bit scared. He double checks everything. When he double checks, you can look into his soul because he's so confused. Like, it's like you just <laughs> look straight into this guy's soul. Love the guy. Love the guy. It's so funny. But yeah, man, thank you for having me. I hope I am valuable enough to come Absolutely, back dude. Absolutely. Please, I'll see you soon. Like, comment, subscribe. All that. <laughs>